Hi everyone, in this video we'll be discussing Avogadro's law, what it is and what its applications in everyday life are. Here is our syllabus dot point. Just to recap, Avogadro's law is one of the gas laws which are derived from the ideal gas law. Gas laws are a set of laws which describe the behaviour of gases under various conditions. But they assume that gases have multiple ideal properties, such as being that they have low density, they are free-flowing or forming, which means that they can leak through cracks and fill the volumes of containers that they are in, they are compressible and expandable, and also they are diffusive. Amadei Avogadro was a 17th century scientist who was famed because he is the first to distinguish between atoms and molecules. He is also known for developing Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23, and that's defined as being the number of particles which make up a mole. Avogadro's contributions, however, also include his formation of the individual gas law, the Avogadro's law. So Avogadro's law is a gas law which states that ideal gases containing the same number of molecules will occupy the same volume given that they are at the same pressure and temperature. The law also thus implies that the number of moles of an ideal gas and its volume are directly proportional when pressure and temperature are at a constant value. So the way that we can quantify this relationship is by looking at the variables of the ideal gas law, which is PV equals to nRT. The ideal gas law can be rearranged by dividing both the left and the right hand sides by P to give us the formula V equals to nRT divided by P. Avogadro's law requires pressure and temperature to be constant in order for the relationship between volume and the number of moles of gas to be directly proportional. So assuming that temperature and pressure are constant, we can say RT divided by P is equal to a constant, let's call it K. In that case, V must be equal to N multiplied by K. And therefore, if we increase V, we must increase N, and thus N is going to be directly proportional to V. In the ideal gas law equation, N describes the quantity of gas. Quantity can be measured in particles or in molecules, which would then be converted into number of moles by dividing it by Avogadro's number. V refers to volume and is measured in a variety of different units. It can be measured in milliliters, in liters where 1 liter equals to 1000 milliliters, or in meters cubed where 1 meter cubed is equal to 1000 liters. A consequence of Avogadro's law is the concept of molar volume. At specific temperatures and pressures, where temperature and pressure are held constant, molar volume describes the specific proportion of moles to volume. So at 273.15 Kelvin and 100 kPa's, which we call STP, that stands for standard temperature and pressure, one mole of gas is equivalent to 22.71 liters in volume. Similarly, at 298 0.15 Kelvin and 100 kPa's, also known as RTP, which is room temperature and pressure, one mole of gas is equal to 24.79 liters in volume. So what does this mean? This means that if a question described there to be one mole of H2 hydrogen gas or one mole of O2 oxygen gas at STP, you would know that the volume of both of these gases would be equal to 22.71 liters. And similarly, one mole of H2 and one mole of O2 gas at RTP would occupy a space of 24.79 liters each. As previously described, we can derive the mathematical relationship V equals to K times N from the ideal gas law PV equals to NRT, where P and T are constant. We can also use this relationship to define another relationship, which is that V1 on N1 equals to V2 on N2, and we can do that to calculate how changes in V or N will affect one another in a system where temperature and pressure are held constant. Here is a graph demonstrating the direct proportional relationship between volume and the number of moles of gas. When there is no moles of gas, there is going to be no volume. Avogadro's law is used in contemporary society to determine storage requirement spaces for carrying and transporting gas. Using Avogadro's law, we can work out how much gas can be stored in a certain amount of space. 
Furthermore, Avogadro's law has helped us recognize that volumes can be used to help calculate stoichiometric amounts that are in reactions. An example of this is using gas syringing in order for us to record volumes obtained by reactions which are producing gas. So here we have an example demonstrating Avogadro's law. Consider a balloon which initially has 6 moles in it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This balloon is connected to a pump. When the pump is pressed, the volume of the balloon increases to exactly 2 times the original amount. According to Avogadro's law, volume and amount are directly proportional. Because the volume has increased by 2 times, the amount of gas that's inside must have also increased by 2 times. And what we observe is while there was initially 6 moles, because the volume has doubled, the number of moles inside the balloon have also doubled. And there are a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 moles of gas now inside of the balloon. Here we have a practice example for Avogadro's law. The question asks, what is the volume of 2 moles of oxygen gas at RCP, which is room temperature and pressure? So it's important to recognize, and this is given to you on the data sheet, that at RTP, the volume of 1 mole of gas is equal to 24.79 liters. This means that for 2 moles, we have a total of 49.58 liters. This next question says, at a certain temperature and pressure, 1.5 moles of gas occupies a volume of 32 liters. How much volume is occupied by 2.2 moles of gas at the same temperature and pressure? Because the pressure states specifically that it is at the same temperature and pressure, we can use another relationship that's described by Avogadro's law to do our calculation. So if there is a change in volume or the amount of gas, we can use the formula V1 on N1 equals to V2 on N2 to do our calculation. In this case, the number of moles has changed from 1.5 moles to 2.2 moles, and the initial volume is 32 liters, and we are trying to find the final volume. So we substitute our values in 32 divided by 1.5 equals to V2 divided by 2.2. So if we multiply both sides by 2.2, we'll get the value for V2. So 2.2 times 32 on 1.5 gives us a final value of 47 liters, and that's giving our answer to two significant figures. This next question reads, a weather balloon contains 84.7 liters of gas at standard temperature and pressure. How many moles of gas should be removed from the balloon so that it contains only 60 liters? So now on the Nessa data sheet, at STP, one mole of gas occupies 22.71 liters. So if we are going from 84.7 liters to 60 liters, we have to decrease a total of 24.7 liters of space. The number of moles which this 24.7 liters is equivalent to is equal to 24.7 divided by 22.71 moles which equals to 1.09 moles, and that is in three significant figures. This next question reads, calculate the volume of water vapor that is produced from the complete combustion of 10 liters of methane gas at RTP. So we first have to write out what the equation is for the complete combustion of methane gas. Methane gas has the formula CH4 and is in the gas phase phase. Complete combustion involves reaction with oxygen gas in order to produce carbon dioxide gas and also water vapor. And we will now balance our equation. So what we observe is that the volume of water vapor that would be produced by combustion of methane gas is going to have a mole ratio of 1 to 2. However, we know according to Avogadro's law, that when temperature and pressure are held constant, which is the case at RTP, the ratio of volumes are also going to be equal to the ratio of their moles. Since the ratio of moles of CH4 to H2O are 1 to 2, we also know that the volume of CH4 to the volume of H2O must also equal to 1 to 2. And so that means the volume of H2O is going to equal to 10 
times 2, which means a total of 20 litres will be produced from complete combustion of 10 litres of methane gas. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning. Thank you.